The mid-order nut rule is a numerical method of integration very similar to the trapezium rule which we met in Core 2. It's often the case that integrals can't be evaluated or are extremely difficult to evaluate, which is why having methods such as the mid-order nut rule, good approximations is useful. It's very similar to the trapezium rule. We divide into strips slightly differently. Here we make rectangles as opposed to with the trapezium rule we use these endpoints, didn't we? These different y values. We have a single y value here, and this point's determined by the y value that comes from the middle of the x values. So the top of the rectangle is drawn at the point on the curve where the x value is in the middle of the strip. just there. And then we get an approximation by adding together the areas of all of the different rectangles we use. This not only makes it quite an accurate method as there is an, a better element than with the trapezium rule of these underestimates and overestimates balancing out a bit so it tends to be better than the trapezium rule but also it's a lot easier to calculate as you're just working out rectangles. Obviously the area of the rectangle is just the width times the height. We tend to use h as the width as we did with the trapezium rule, so it's the bit that's always the same. The strips will all be of equal width. The height is obviously just a y value, so we use that y value and we'll get different y values for each rectangle. So we end up with an area of h times y and a very simple formula. h is always the same, so it's just h times the sum of all the y values. So for example, if we're looking at this definite integral here, we have the curve y equals ln x. We're looking at between 1 and 2, so and with four rectangles. The number of x values is the same as the number of strips or rectangles. To work out what the width of each strip is, we simply divide the difference between A and B, between the endpoints, by the number of rectangles. So in this instance, it's just going to be a quarter, isn't it? This means that our first x value will be in the middle of 1 and 1 and a quarter, which is 1 and an eighth, or 1.125. And then if we just add a quarter each time, we get the other x values. So that's adding a quarter, adding another quarter, adding another quarter. We could then use the calculator to work out the y values by just putting the natural log of each of these numbers into the calculator. And then in the formula, we simply add them all up and multiply by a quarter. And there's our answer to four decimal places as requested. So to summarise, that's the formula we use. It's in the formula booklet. N is the number of strips. H is the width of each strip, and it's always the same. And we find it out by the upper limit minus the lower limit divided by the number of strips. And we get the first value by adding H over 2 to the lower limit and then we just keep adding whatever h is to find subsequent x values. We can improve our accuracy by increasing the number of rectangles. Okay have a go at these. As usual if you're successful then you're ready to move on. Any problems then maybe it's worth having a little look back over the presentation and make sure you understand it.
OK. So here's the answers. That's what the first one looks like. We've got a width of a half. This is the table of values with the different x values. Put the x values in here to work out the y values. And then it's just a half times the sum of them. So we should have got 1.109. And as always, we can improve our answer by using more strips. So here's the second question. So that means pi over 6 will be the first value. And then we're adding pi over 3 each time, aren't we? Put them into here. We get these results. And we end up with 1.57 to three significant figures. This is just to give you an idea of under and overestimates using the bid ordinate rule. You can see here that we've got underestimates because where we've got the blue bits extra. The red bit is more. It depends on the shape of the curve, doesn't it? And we can see in both of these that we get underestimates, whereas here we get overestimates. Generally, though, the mid ordinate rule is a reasonable method of numerical approximations for definite integrals.